Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel and thanks for joining us. In this video, we are going to talk about what is influencing 3D vector graphics technology. GPU, Pipeline, and the Vector Graphics API. We are going to continue our discussion about rendering 3D graphics and talk about what is driving the industry and how hardware changes have affected graphics. We will also compare the current API players and how they differ from each other. The main driving influence pushing the internet can be directly linked to high bandwidth applications such as teleconferencing or on-demand streaming video. So what pushes vector graphics? On personal computers, one of the original use cases for rendering 3D graphics was computer-aided design and scientific modeling. As an example, a structural engineer wants to see an accurate 3D model of the bridge they are designing and what might occur when a gust of wind comes up. It would be strange for a bridge designer to care about realistic lighting, skin textures, or facial expressions. These elements are, however, common in games, and they need to happen 60 times a second. It is the gaming industry which now drives and pushes hardware and software vendors in the field of computer vector graphics. There are special libraries called game engines, which provide a higher level abstraction between game software and the rendering commands which are sent to the graphics card. These engines do nothing to help a GUI developer who wants to incorporate computer graphics in their desktop application. Your current choices are to write low-level rendering code by hand or find a GUI library to bridge this gap. There are not many GUI libraries, and few of them support more than one graphics API. Most of them do not take advantage of hardware-accelerated rendering which means they were not designed to support modern graphics hardware. One of our Copper Spice libraries can be used to access the OpenGL API from your GUI application. You can designate a drawing area where your graphics are rendered. The problem is that existing widgets like a Q push button or a Q combo box are not drawn using OpenGL. We are in the development cycle on a new rendering library which Copperspice will use to paint the existing widgets using a modern graphics API like Vulkan or OpenGL. These enhancements to Copperspice will not require a new widget system or a redundant GUI interface. Achieving this goal will improve performance, provide better graphics integration with every OS, and allow smoother animation. The goal is to change the internals of Copper Spice so developers do not have to drastically rewrite their code. The changes in hardware, notably the GPU, have reshaped what was hidden in the graphics driver and is now exposed in APIs like OpenGL or Direct3D. When NVIDIA released the GeForce graphics card in 1999, it had a GPU on board. This was the first time a graphics processing unit was added to a consumer-grade graphics card. The cost was around $250. A CAD workstation in that same era would have set you back around $250,000. With the addition of a GPU, graphics hardware could take over operations previously computed by the CPU. Transformation and lighting operations became the responsibility of the GPU based on user-supplied data. This was a cumbersome and limited process since the functionality of the GPU was fixed. It was the game developers who complained and drove hardware vendors to redesign the hardware and expose a more flexible interface. Gamers wanted both the performance of hardware rendering and the freedom to define the way it would happen. So the first generation of consumer GPUs were not programmable. However, nearly every GPU produced since 2001 has some level of programmability. This can lead to confusing terminology. The CPU on your motherboard is hardware, running software, 
namely your application. The GPU on the graphics card is also hardware, running software which implements all the calculations required to render an image. Even though both the CPU and the GPU are processors executing software, most developers still refer to the part of the rendering process which occurs on the GPU as being hardware rendering. The Direct3D8 API was a major change with the addition of programmable pixel shaders and vertex shaders, precisely what game developers were asking for. Shaders are small programs which run on the GPU. Although the idea of shaders was really cool, they have been hard to use and complicated to program due to the syntax and hardware limitations. It is worth mentioning that OpenGL did not actually add shaders as part of the standard API until 2004. Before then, shaders were only accessible through vendor-specific extensions. These extensions were just as messy and awkward as the Direct3D8 implementation. Essentially, it involved programming the GPU in assembly language. One of the things we have touched on was that initially the GPU was manufactured by the hardware vendor with a fixed set of operations and functionality. This was the fixed function pipeline approach, and it was deprecated in Direct3D8 and OpenGL3. The new approach uses a programmable pipeline architecture. Tragically, many of the current day 3D graphics examples developers refer to still use the fixed function pipeline. If you are looking for examples, please make sure any demo you review uses the programmable pipeline. The operations in the fixed pipeline controlled the attributes, detailing how the graphics should be rendered. This functionality became known as shaders. When the API moved to the programmable pipeline, shaders were still required, but now they are supplied by the user. To resolve the problems of programming shaders in a maintainable way, high-level shader languages were added in Direct3D9 and OpenGL2. For an application to communicate with the graphics hardware, you need a software interface. These are implemented as libraries. However, the functionality exposed by those libraries is commonly referred to as an API. OpenGL is the oldest API still used today. It is cross-platform, supported on nearly every OS and almost all hardware. It is also cross-language, since the interface is callable from C. It is purely a graphics rendering API, and does not address any other facets of the user interface, such as audio, user input, networking, or window management. This means that every OpenGL program needs at least some platform-specific code or calls to a third-party library to set up a display surface. OpenGL has a rich and very frequently used extension system, which allows GPU vendors to expose new hardware functionality without needing to wait for a new version of the OpenGL specification. DirectX refers to a group of related APIs which handle video, graphics, and multimedia. The X is simply a placeholder for any given API. Direct3D is one of the components of DirectX, and it covers 3D graphics. The DirectX libraries were created to address a performance problem when Microsoft moved to Windows 95. Prior to this, most games were written to run in DOS where drivers were not required. Instead, developers accessed the hardware directly. Windows 95 added a protected memory model which limited direct hardware access. 
DirectX was added very late in the development process for Windows 95 as a quick fix to address concerns that games written for DOS had better graphics and performance. Microsoft knew that without good support for gaming, it would be difficult to convince users to migrate to Windows 95. DirectX is an interface which is only supported on Windows, so it does not have to deal with the complexity of being cross-platform. There are also no extensions provided in DirectX, so a programmer can use the entire API and assume all features will be present. On the other hand, this means that hardware features sometimes take longer to be available in DirectX. There is typically no software emulation for missing features, so commands that the current GPU does not support are typically ignored and the quality of the output can be degraded while the performance will remain high. Although OpenGL had been the dominant force, Direct3D 8 and 9 moved Microsoft to be a much more significant player in the rendering API market. DirectX really took off when version 9 was released. XP was very stable, and game developers started targeting DirectX version 9 as soon as it came out. The main drawback with Direct3D prior to version 12 was that it did not provide any low-level access to the graphics hardware, as game developers were used to on consoles. Direct3D 12 was released in response and to counter the amazing success of the Mantle API, which had been released the previous year. A key element Microsoft changed was a move to multi-threading and explicit memory management. The Microsoft strategy has been to support DirectX 12 only on Windows 10 to encourage both game developers and customers to upgrade. When AMD donated their graphics API, called Mantle, to the Kronos Group, there was a lot of work to be done. The Mantle interface was only supported on some Radeon hardware and only on Windows. The Kronos Group insisted the API work with additional hardware from other vendors and run cross-platform. They changed the name from Mantle to Vulkan and initially referred to the project as the next generation OpenGL. Soon it became clear that OpenGL and Vulkan were very different interfaces and the link connecting Vulkan and OpenGL was dropped. Compared to OpenGL, Direct3D, or Metal, the Vulkan API is more complicated and intended to offer higher performance, reduced driver overhead, and balanced CPU-GPU usage. Using the feedback and lessons from the earlier low-level interfaces, the Kronos Group was able to adjust the Vulkan API to provide the control that developers wanted and expose the full power of the hardware. There is a standard closely related to OpenGL called OpenGL ES. It is a subset of the OpenGL standard designed to be used on embedded systems with typically less powerful GPU hardware. Graphics on embedded systems are moving towards Vulkan since the benefits of a more efficient graphics pipeline are very important to the embedded and mobile market. The advent of translation libraries, such as Glove, allows developers to keep legacy code working on newer platforms which have dropped support for OpenGL ES. If your application uses OpenGL ES on Windows, you can leverage the translation library called Angle to convert the OpenGL ES calls to Direct3D calls. This library is used by Chrome and Firefox to render WebGL content. The main reason a developer might want to use Angle is if the software is written using OpenGL ES, but the OpenGL drivers on the target platform are missing or poorly implemented. The Metal API was designed to be convenient and easier for developers to use as an alternative to OpenGL. 
The general idea may have been that more games would be written for the Mac platform if the graphics interface was improved. It made sense for Apple to develop a new API. However, many have asked why they stuck with it after Vulkan was released a year later. There is some speculation that Apple engineers thought Vulkan was too complicated for the general developer. One of the other concerns we have observed is that game developers prefer C++ or even C. And while metal shaders are written in a derivative of C++, you cannot call the metal API directly from these computer languages. With the release of Metal version 2, there was hope it would bring back Mac game development, which has not occurred. Looking at game stores like Steam show that most games are still developed for Windows. Some are available on Mac, however they are usually ports from Windows. These games are slower since the ports tend to have to use a much older version of OpenGL. It takes more work to port the game and rewrite the graphics. The availability of Metal has not, so far, inspired game developers to write Mac-only games. OpenGL has been around for over 25 years, but its future is unclear, although it is still widely used. It came close to dying multiple times, and then surprisingly, it continues to be resurrected. So we are not going to write it off just yet. Mantle came and went very quickly, and few developers may even be aware of its existence. Metal, Direct 3D12, and Vulkan are all modern APIs, which are competing with each other, and these are the graphics interfaces you want to choose from and use in your software applications to render 3D graphics. In our next video, we will explore how to choose an API and then show the detailed steps required to render graphics for OpenGL and Vulkan. We will also talk about the most recent GPU feature called ray tracing. For more information about the CopperSpice project, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment on this video or send us an email. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back in a few weeks for our next video.